powder made of the bones of St. Thomas. Well, well, who are we here? Ah, the prodigal son returns. I knew you'd come back to me one day. Let me guess, you saw it in a dream? I knew you were going to say that. I had a dream of my own. You too? So you learned something from me after all? Yeah, it was just when I was getting pummeled by a mob of very irate villagers. Uh, odd, that unfortunate misunderstanding. What can you do? Misunderstanding, yeah. I tried to explain that to them, but they were too busy kicking my arse to listen. I've heard you know of some irresistibility potion or whatever it is. Oh, naturally! Musk of infinite allure! An age-old recipe, maybe even older. Tested by Moses himself. Moses? Or how do you think he managed to get his people to follow him through the desert for 40 years? It's extremely potent. Yes, yeah, so it would seem. How much do you want for it? Who do you take me for? The wisdom of the ancients isn't something that's bought and sold in the marketplace. Did Jesus charge for his miracles? But since you ask, how about this much? What? That much? You're a crook. As King Solomon said, honesty is for those who can afford it. If you like, I can mix the elixir for you in exchange for a small favor. Oh, not again. Now, is that any tone to use with your master? For shame. Apologies, master. I was carried away by my thirst for knowledge. I understand your impatience, but the way to wisdom is narrow and arduous. And leads out the window. So what is it you want from me now? Ah, oh, my dear apprentice, everything's gone to the devil. I'm living from hand to mouth, sleeping on straw. And the local peasants won't buy from me. They say they don't trust me, as if I were some kind of charlatan. Can you believe it? Does this look to you like the face of a swindler? I'm an honest trader in sacred goods, whose only concern is the welfare of troubled souls. And any time now the slanderous gossip will spread here from Sasau, I should leave before things get worse. But I can't go anywhere until I've made a bit of coin. So, what's needed is to give the locals a bit of encouragement to open their hearts and purses. I'm not going to go around beating people for you. What do you take me for? I, I wouldn't hurt a fly. Violence is for the dull-witted. We must gently demonstrate to them the necessity of buying my remedies. For example, to ward off a revenant. Revenant? What revenant? Well, the dead return from the grave. A corpse that the soul is unable to depart from, which wanders among the living, filled with rage at its wretched fate. Yeah, I saw something like that once. But it was just some drunk going home from the tavern after losing all his money at dice. Don't make light of such things. Now tell me... Do you know how to deal with a revenant? Garlic and a crucifix should be enough, right? Those are things everyone should have to repel malign spirits and other evils. You are my trained apprentice, but the ignorant villager entirely at a loss how to deal with such dark forces. It is our sacred duty to prepare them for such threats. And how do you propose to do that? Well, they're all doubting Thomases. They need proof. We'll need a grave, an empty grave that we can use. 
There's one along the way to Sasau, but it's got one minor shortcoming. What's that? Well, it's not uh, entirely empty. Not entirely? What does that mean? You have to dig it up first. But that's a sin. Refusing to help the needy is also a sin. I haven't had a decent meal for 40 days and 40 nights. My conscience is clear where your stomach is concerned. Disturbing a grave is a, well, a grave sin. A grave is not in hallowed ground, so that's hardly worth one lord's prayer and penance. I asked a priest once, just out of curiosity. Why this particular grave? The locals don't like to talk about it, so it's surely got some sinister past behind it. And in places like that, revenants sprout up like mushrooms after rain. Well, if that's how it is, we could open all wounds. That could easily set people against us. Again. Then it would be best if no one could connect us to it, wouldn't it? I'll need a spade, then. Yes. Dig it up and remove the remains, leaving no trace. And what am I to do with the remains? Keep them. <laughs> Human remains are always handy to have around. Oh, great. And how do we spread the word of this revenant? There's a gossip in every village. Here too, a woman who'll spread news quicker than a dozen messengers on the fastest steeds. And what am I to tell this gossip? All you have to do is casually mention the empty grave, and before evening, I'll wager the whole village will know about it. Where does this woman live? The last house on the left, on the road to Sasso. She was the first person I met here, and by the time I reached the village green, I already had a mob looking suspiciously at me. The rumor-mongering fishwife. And that's all? Not quite. You should ask her who was buried there. So we've got a story to work with. So, dig up the grave, talk to the gossip. And the remains. Uh, don't forget to remove them. Otherwise, no one will believe in the Revenant. I might have known any task for a capon would turn into some insane escapade. Grave robbing. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> God save you. What can I do for you?
God grant you well. How may I help you? Where do I go to sleep? That's easy. As soon as you go indoors, at the end of the room on the left, there's a door leading to the chamber. Everything's prepared for you there. Mother of God, 
You look like you've been assaulted. I'd like to make use of the bathhouse's services. So what are you interested in? A bit of everything. Heal my wounds, have a proper bath. Oh, and my garments are in need of laundering. No, no, no but of course. Breath, Money first, pay, though. And then you can even them. Fine. Here it is. I'm sure you'll be extremely satisfied. Goodbye. Yeah. Be with you, good wife. Has, uh, has something happened here? Heavens no. It's quiet here, unlike some other places. And what about that empty grave? What empty grave would that be now? 
The one beyond the village alongside the road to Sassau. Just by the river, on the pine headland. How would you know it's empty, unless it was dug up? Oh, it's dug up, all right. Freshly. And empty. I saw it with my own two eyes. Lord in heaven, what in the name of... How come it's not in hallowed ground, anyway? Only unrepentant sinners are buried like that. Usually. I don't like to say. It's an old wound that's best forgotten. Whose grave is it? Well, once a long time ago, there was a young charcoal burner living here with his wife. There was always a lot of charcoal burners here, but this fellow worked alone. That's not an easy job for one man. Well, no one wanted to work with him, or what? Ah, oh, he was a hard-headed fellow who always wanted to take care of his family himself. Well, I can understand that. It's always better to work for yourself than break your back for someone else. His wife was expecting, though no one knew it yet. And he wasn't doing well at all. Soon enough, they had nothing to eat. And so he took to thieving. Well, thieving is wrong. Aye, but when there's a child on the way and your wife hasn't the strength to get out of bed for the hunger, well, you ought to think differently. And did he get caught? Well, at first it was just a few eggs going missing from people's hen coops. But then it was anything that wasn't nailed down. And in the end, they caught him. And I suppose he was harshly punished for it. Even then he didn't let on why he was doing it. They whipped the skin off his back and banished him from Ledichkop. So justice was done then? It wasn't enough for some folk. When the butcher found out he'd never get any compensation, he wanted them to chop off the charcoal burner's hands. If the bailiff hadn't talked sense into him, he'd have done it himself with his cleaver. Well, he got off lightly enough then. And in the end, he got what was coming to him, and more. The butcher caught up with him? No, no. It was the mills of God turning slowly but surely. His wife bled to death in childbirth. And the child died with her. God have mercy on their souls. Amen. Nothing could have been done to save them. There was no one there. He had no one who would care for his wife. They say on that day, he parted ways with God forever. And he turned his back on the village too. I reckon he never forgave himself. Nor us, either. <sighs> The Lord moves in mysterious ways. But how did he end up? Don't ask me that, lad. I beg you. Come now, good wife. You can't leave the story unfinished. I said no. Will you let it lie? <laughs>